Today is Sunday, October 29th, 2017, and school is officially in. Boom. <laughs> there's that fade, there's that fade again. <laughs> Yo, um, as always, for some reason, we keep having technical um, difficulties, but once again, the School's In podcast is back. I am Mitch, and still we ride. I am still forever, we ride. <laughs> jo- still we ride, and forever joined by my two illustrious co-hosts, let's see, um, the body rocking, the show stopping. I think that might be it. <laughs> Definitely body rocking. <laughs> and um the yes, yes, y'allin. To the beat y'allin. That might be Aaron over there. Yes, yes, y'all. <laughs> yeah. So today we're we're doing the last element. So this is the last element in our element, our month-long element show. And the fifth element of hip-hop, because we did the first one was DJ, and the second one was um, B-Boying, and the third was Graffiti Art. Last week was the fourth, we did MCing, and today we are doing the fifth, which is knowledge. Knowledge of self, culture, and understanding. Ooh. Mm. So it's not a tangible element like the other elements are. You know, it's more right. um, a cerebral, abstract. but abstract. And it's very, but it's still important. Very important. And why do we think that that is important, my co host? That's a part of the thing is hip, intelligent movement is what hip hop is. You can't have intelligence without knowledge. Intelligent movement. I mean, I would wholeheartedly agree with you, but I, there apparently are a bunch of people out there right now who don't give a great <laughs> ass about intelligent movement. That's probably our first time hearing that phrase. Yeah, more than likely. Cause you know, it's funny. It's, all it's about- funny cause it's it's funny cause like um when you talk about like um a fifth element of hip hop is always somebody that got a different opinion on what a, on what the fifth element is. It's, oh, the fifth element of hip hop is is basketball. The fifth element of hip hop oh, is beatboxing. Totally beatboxing. <laughs> the fifth element is always something. It's always something that you know what I'm saying. It's everything but knowledge. So you know that's kind of uh, that's crazy. Um, I don't know if I would call. Like beatboxing an element of hip hop, though. I mean, it's definitely part of hip hop culture. Mm-hmm. But I mean, where would you put that? I wouldn't call that. I would call that part of the beat. Like you're really I just mimicking it, the beat. There's a component of hip hop. It is a piece hip-hop of it, music. but what you're. Go ahead. I was just saying hip hop music, not the not so much. But the I mean, well, I mean, you're what you're doing when you beatbox is you're. What you're doing is you're mimicking a drum. You're mimicking the drum so you can rhyme over them. Yeah, that's, so that's kind of still kind of the DJ. Right, that's kind of like that's kind of like seeing that <laughs> uh, uh, beat makers, beat makers are the fifth element. Right, but see, that's a, but that's a that's a DJ offshoot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would throw that in that category that already exists. I wouldn't create a whole new lane for it. Yeah, you well, you know, everybody, everybody got their own opinion on what the fifth element is all the time. It's always a different. It's always something different. It's never like you know. Those are just the more common things that you hear a lot of times. Stuff. I know. I don't know about no damn basketball at all. That at all either. Yeah. I don't know where they got that crap from. Wait a minute. Um, which, which outlet did that? Which outlet did that? Oh, that, was, that was Hip Hop DX with Murs again. 
Of course it was. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> yeah, I remember. Some because, people say double that. Well, no, we said that was, was the um the sixth element. Remember? Somebody the said six? that there I was we the said sixth that was... lost element. Uh-uh. Africa Bambada said that that was the sixth lost element that Double Dutch was. Mm-hmm. No. I know, so I know knowledge kind of came a little bit later, but knowledge is, is important because, you know, if we had knowledge, we wouldn't say dumb shit out of our faces like things like Mira says every two seconds. Yeah, how about <laughs> it's especially important no. these days because, like, that is just, like, the new role models. Well, not role models, but, like, if you look to them for leadership. You should never be looking to an MC, or not, excuse me, not an MC, <laughs> a rapper of today um, in general for leadership because that's not what you're there for. <laughs> I mean, if you're looking for Gucci man to lead you, mm-hmm. I'm saying like, do, like or boozy badass. Are you gonna mm-hmm. do what he does? Are you, are you gonna get all money found out? Is that what <laughs> yeah. you gonna do? How about this? Yeah. <clears throat> Isn't so that what's happening? We, so, <laughs> so when we talk about when we talk about like you know knowledge of the culture, like um. Like, like, you know, just for the listeners, like, we need to clear up, like, what we talking about exactly, like, is it just, like, the knowledge of the elements itself, or is it, you know, um, being, or is it being knowledgeable of the elements and being able to bring them together? That, too, you need to do all the above, but you also need to have knowledge of things outside of the culture, especially the things that, that, that come together and combine to make the culture up itself like how we've always broken down the different types of music like jazz and um and like even disco and funk and r&b and soul because all of those things combined together create hip-hop is a conglomerate it's a huge like a, a big pot a cauldron of things that we threw in together that we fused together and made one right so how can you understand the parts if you don't you know you gotta understand all the parts to understand the whole yeah exactly yeah I think we talk about that a lot on this show though like we talk about like you know the things that make up hip hop the things that make up R&B the things that make up you know um all of these, all of these things, you know, not just, um, not just rap music, like that. A lot of people try to dis- discard or, you know, try to do without, like, um, like we talked about, um, MCs that, you know, try to, uh, uh denounce, denounce the DJ, or you no, know, they like, right. or they don't want to. Or they don't want to do songs for B boys anymore, or that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, to them that's old. well, they don't. They don't. They don't. Everything that hip hop was, um, is what's being denounced now. They don't. Nobody wants to to adhere to what hip hop was. So, like, I, I think mean, I sent y'all earlier this week, like maybe a few days ago, and we'll talk about this more extensively. We're gonna get in, in that ass. I believe that is that was complex. That was like jumping all down um, Lupe Fiasco's throat about that bitch. Mm. Oh, yeah. I thought, what? <laughs> like, I was like, like I'm no. reading that like, what? <laughs> I said, that was 2012. I had no idea they even did that to him. Yeah. And like, I was, I was looking on Twitter the other day when they were talking about uh, Crit album. I'm like, they they posted that it wasn't them. It was DJ Booth. They posted that they was gonna have a review shortly. I'm like, the album just came out. Why are they removing it? Now, not removing it, reviewing it. How you gonna have a review for it and it just came out? They do that all the time. Because. Because that shit is meaningless at this point. That's they, why. they jumped the gun. They jumped the gun. They probably did that with that with Big Bad. They jumped the gun. No, I don't think so. I really don't. So, for those that are, you know, confused, this is the reason why I love 
but one good thing, a few good things about the internet. One of the good things about the internet is that the internet keeps mad receipts. And you can't hide shit. From, so if somebody was trying to be like, oh, no, we never did that. You go straight. I, all I had to do was type in Lupe Fiasco and Complex. I think it's Complex that did that film. Mm-hmm. And it just popped right up. And, like, the thing that they said, like, I'm starting to start to, to really actually believe our conspiracy theories about, um, like, using our music to attack us with it because if you're standing from the outside of like you know the culture and you're not a black or brown person Mm -hmm. because we use we talked about this from the very beginning with hip-hop hip-hop we use this shit to uplift ourselves it's not just some music we would just happen to be bopping around to right right like this was born out of you know squashing gang culture and you know out of poverty and the things we were bringing you know to lift us up out of our our situation and to to bring some light to the darkness that was in you know people's lives when they were stuck in these situations that they couldn't get out of they use art to 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 propel themselves higher that's a whole lot deeper than you just playing some music. Yeah, true. So when you step into that and you start, because Complex, like, they were dogging Lupe Fiasco and, you know, basically calling him, you know, like a snob, looking down on people with his conscious rap. That's basically what yeah. I mean, we can get into, like, the actual things that they were talking about with Bad Bitch later when we talk about Bad Bitches on our Bad Bitch show. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, like, t- I was kind of taken aback reading that. Is there... All right, now, I want to ask a question. Like, is there a way that somebody can go about doing it and, like, come off as a snob, though? they probably could but you've heard bad bitch right yeah I've, I've heard that but I was bringing I was I was saying that because like um a lot of times I feel like people you know people that's you know they they got like good intentions behind things but like they do come off as not like um Hobson Hobson for example a lot of times yeah. Hobson come off as this type of dude that's just you know oh uh lives over everything and then like he got those these ill mind freestyles that um he he put out every uh like it seemed like he put them out every uh six months or whatever and um well that's what they called Lupe like they were accusing him of you know this his lyrics over everything attitude um you know is is like you know like a plague on our house like you know it's it's, it's a plague on hip hop. Yeah, I don't but, necessarily I mean, think that. Go ahead. The point, the point I'm trying to get at is like, where do we draw the line as far as like you know where uh, uh you you being condescending and you just trying to tell people about themselves for the betterment of you know what I'm saying the culture or just for you know what I'm saying humanity in general. Uh-huh. Well, okay, so. Li- Here's the issue, and I'm I'm reading the title to this article: "Rap's Long History of Conscious con- Condescension to Women." Lupe Fiasco's "Bad Bitch" is only the latest example of a male hip hop star trying to empower women, but actually demeaning them. Do you think I'm just I'm, and I'm just asking you? Do you think "Bad Bitch" is a demeaning song? No. And I'm trying I didn't to figure take, out where, where I didn't come I didn't take it that way. But you got see, but we got these feminist groups out here that take stuff differently now too. Mm-hmm. Some of them some of them jump on anything. And they do. I, I was taking that into to, to consideration at the same time. You know, humble. thinking, okay, well I know the climate has changed about you know, about that. But has the climate changed so bad that 
and I want to know who wrote this too, because like I said before, is, is this is this coming from outside of our culture? I think if you, you know go what down I mean? to the bottom, you go down to the bottom, these faces there. I'm trying to see who this came from. Uh, but more it, than at like. this point, it, it doesn't even matter sometimes at this point because we're attacking ourselves from inside the culture now. We are, uh-huh. and that's, that's always my argument with the whole Eminem thing. I hate to always bring him up, but <clears throat> don't sit. When we doing stuff like this to somebody like Lupe, when you sitting there, you know, talking, oh, he's being condescending or, you know, this, or whatever the case may be, he's talking down on people. But then... Um, you know, you got you got people within the culture that feel like, oh well, you know, that's what make Eminem dope because he don't have to, you know, get on the gangster and the the bitches and hoes wagon all the time. He can he can he can say stuff. You know what I'm saying? That a lot of black artists he can touch on things that a lot of black artists don't touch on. And then the the artists the the black artists that we talk about that do touch on things that's you know that's not degrading or demeaning to you know. Um, us as people like we sit there and talk about how they talking down on us like that's what I don't understand that's annoying too. yeah okay so 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 Michael Denzel Smith is he definitely is a black man I'm, I'm like clicking on him right now I'm oh, sorry go ahead Aunt. I see his face y'all hear, y'all hear me <laughs> yeah, yeah what'd what you happened? say I, I don't forgot what I said. Oh yeah, they say um, they don't have a platform that some of those rappers will never have, and I'm like, why? And it's, it's always come back because he's white. I mean, well, okay. even he know that. I know that. He knows what color he is. Now it's your problem. But my but my problem with it is that if I sit there like I've done it to normal people like people that I've interacted with like I'll be like all right you look I'll be like yo listen to this song and they'll be like oh it's cool but I don't be you know what I'm saying they don't want to you know it's a black artist and oh I don't want to hear all that you know that that speaking on things and all this you know and you know all that <laughs> talking about social issues and all, like they don't want to hear that but then you know as soon as somebody like Eminem do it it's like oh well why can't more black artists do stuff like this and it's like see this is the shit I, that's what I'm talking about that's what pisses me off mm-hmm. I mean I don't know <laughs> um my issue is because we've broken down within ourselves Cause, like I am looking at this dude his name is Michael Denzel Smith I've, I've heard his name before actually He's written for The Nation, Ebony, and The Guardian before. I've, I've seen and heard him. Like, I don't understand why. And I get it. Everything is conspicuous now. Mm-hmm. This is the generation where everything is conspicuous. And everybody, so all the stuff we used to do is not held under this tight microscope. And they're looking at everything we do. I am trying to figure out, even after reading this article... Just like I was trying to figure out what Murs was talking about something. Because, I mean, we talk about knowledge on this show. Oh. We do the research. <laughs> we always talk about fuck your, uninf- your, your uninformed opinion. Like, <laughs> you know, we want to make sure we're, we are, are, you know, doing our homework. Yeah, can we tell? Can I tell the audience right now that we listen to a lot of trash to come to these, <laughs> to come to these conclusions? You're welcome. We really do. You're welcome. I mean, part of it is I feel like so, so much of it is an attack. Is it really an attack about feminism? Because again, why are you attacking Lupe Fiasco's bad bitch? Let's, right. let's unpack that. Let's unpack that. That's my biggest issue. Why are you attacking Lupe Fiasco's bad bitch? And you're so always condescending. Oh, it's. Why are you not attacking these songs that don't try to unpack right. the issues the, with the bad songs, bitch? The songs that he's actually attacking in his song? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is that about? Like, why are you... At- You're, like, doubly attacking... See, that's suspect to me. 
And see, when I think about it inside of our culture doing it, I'm like, what is it that you're actually doing? Why are you giving a pass to the people who have created the need for Lupe to make the song Bad Bitch? (laughs) You know, instead. And not attacking Lupe. And and that's it. See, that goes that and that goes back to what we're talking about now. Like, um, just being just being knowledgeable about the whole situation because anybody who knows anything about this culture is that it's always had that, you know, uh that back and forth Massage. type of dialogue. You know? So when you had if you had like an album like, you know, the chronic out, you know what I'm saying, like then you got the need for Queen Latifah to make a song like, you know, uh, Unity, who you calling a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, right. It's always been that type of it's always been that type of energy. You know what I'm saying? When when yeah, Jay Z right. and Rockefeller, when Jay Z and Rockefeller was talking about all their money, this, that, and the third, and then you got the Rough Riders talking about robbing people like that. So it's always <laughs> it's always been that type you of You do and and then you have someone that comes out that balances all of it and it's like, yo, Fuck all that, you know, um, you know, fuck it, money, you know, or, or like Pasta News back in the day on Sex Society, he was like, you know, fuck being hard, I'm complicated. Uh-huh. And, and that existed, it, the, the balance was there, but that's what I feel like I'm saying is that you're trying to, and that's why I believe it's a CON conspiracy. Mm-hmm. You're trying to further malign, you know, that whole conscious rap genre so you can completely X out anything that's going to bring knowledge, anything that's going to bring understanding, anything that's going to bring someone into the into self-awareness or bring about a stronger um, awareness of the culture. And, you know, you are attempting to play up the bullshit and the shenanigans. And completely wipe out people's, you know, right consciousness. And it seemed like it's always the thing. It seemed like it's always those things that somehow like slip through the cracks. Like, um, like to me, like I feel like um, that Lupe song particularly was one of those songs that that slipped through the cracks. Like, you know, granted Lupe was on a, a major label at the time. You generally really wouldn't be able to hear a song like that, especially around that time. You know. Nope. Like it was getting, it was getting like you know a decent amount of airplay. It was like weird. Yeah. <laughs> like when I heard it. Yeah, and, and it's like it was just, it was ridiculous. Yeah. It was ridiculous. So, I I do want to go back and revisit that that what the actual song was about, the Lupe song "Bad Bitches," and like we'll unpack that later, like when we come back. To the actual bad bitch show and we'll talk about the content of the song but this wasn't about the content like this is about an attack on consciousness and like conscious mm-hmm. rap and not just attack on conscious rap an attack on knowledge because that's really what that is to me hard, you're not even so. fully um pat yeah they did like he, he, he did go hard like you're not you're not even talking about what brought him to the place that to, to make that but I mean you know, I don't see all these articles about Nicki Minaj being half naked and talking about sticking a dick in her mouth every two seconds and dating dope dealers right. the same way I didn't but see back in the day when little Kim was doing that you did hear people saying what the fuck people did say things they weren't just okay like none of us were just okay with this stuff back like in the 90s when that line had kind of been drawn and like it was like the gauntlet was thrown down it was like are we taking this shit fully you know commercial all the conscious people like the you know the more conscious level MCs they weren't cool with that right that's what Sex Was High was about that's the reason why you know you heard on that album you heard them talking about reinstating the native tongues because they felt like you know, themselves and their collective were, you know, they were holding a torch for that. You know, like, you know, if like nobody else is going to, you know, is going to beacon, be a beacon in the light for that, we will. Yeah, unfortunately. Somebody had to do it. But I feel like, 
you know, people like Lupe trying to do that now, their they voices are just drowned. Yeah, they just yeah. shit on. Yeah. All right, so that was a weird <laughs> first period. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so, you know, because we had issues today, whatever, we're trying to <laughs> keep the show short and sweet, though. So we're going to put somebody out to lunch and then come back, um, you know, real briefly. Um, I think we only really have, we only have one period today, really. And then we can do recess when we come back, yeah, because we don't really have, we just want to make sure people understand what's happening out here in these streets, like... Like they trying to trying to jump on your knowledge, man. They don't want you to understand what's going out on out here. They want you to listen to Kodak Black. They don't want you eating and they fresh want fruits you to and vegetables. Be, they don't want you to eat fresh fruits and vegetables. They don't want you, <laughs> you know, meditating and and trying to you know balance your chi. Oh wow, it's not like a whole <laughs> dead prayer song right now. <laughs> prayer prayers was on the song. It was on the song. Right. Um, so who's out to lunch, Ant? I'm gonna let you do it. I'm gonna have to give it to, uh, what's his name, Curtis Jackson? Curtis Jackson. Curtis! Yeah, I'm gonna have to give it to him. Why, what do you think? Or, in 444 comments. I felt like that was an inside job on knowledge, too. You thought it was an inside job? Yeah, that was an inside attack on knowledge, too. Just like well, that yeah, he called it golf course music. Yeah, uh, we rated it. Instead of grasping the gravity of what was being said. Uh, um. Not that he didn't grasp Does it 50 himself. have any gravity? Does 50 have I any think, gravity? I think 50 got it. He got it. But he ain't, that ain't the message he putting out there, though. Well, what's the, what's the issue and the problem? It's 50's too old to be doing that too. Yeah, he knows that. 50's well, a little 50, bit. I think he's a little 50, bit younger than me. 50 also part of that whole um that uh that whole collective of panderers we always talk about that uh that benefit that benefit off of you know the the, the street culture and how that's the only aspect of rap that people need to um <laughs> adhere to. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Well, that's part of the reason why trap, like we just talked, we discussed last week about when we're talking about MC, and is because the reason why you don't have a Jay Z and Nas in this era is because the street culture has just become, you know, overrun with so much nonsense. You don't have anybody in street culture that actually cares about the craft anymore. It's just all about making money to them, so they don't care if they're garbage. They really could give a crap. Or not even they care that they're garbage. They don't understand why they're garbage. <laughs> <laughs> like, they don't even get that they are garbage and why. Because that mm-hmm. whole... That's why, Aaron, even though we talked about lyrics over everything, like, this is what I need you to do. Because lyrics are... There is no lyrics right now in mainstream. Everything is... A, it's like everything over lyrics right now. Let's try lyrics over everything right now and see what happens. And fuck all the rest of that. Let's let's just try that. Yeah, how about let's that? Let's all try that. Let's all try it. Why don't yeah. we? I would rather hear lyrics over everything and see how that turns out than have people shitting on lyrics over everything every two seconds right now. Yeah, how about that? But you know, you know what's funny too. Um, I was thinking about um something you said a while ago. You was talking about like how um this generation of like hip hop artists or even hip hop fans, um, like the stuff we listening to is like you know it's like it's got like this this numb dead over undertone. And, um, yeah. Uh-huh. How like you know it's like the it's like simulating it's almost like simulation of fun. You know what I'm saying? And, um, That's depressing. It <laughs> is like simulation of fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is like um like I didn't think much about it like around the time when you said it, but like the more I listen to like, cause like um 
I've been listening to like you know like a lot of the older like a lot of the older stuff like I'm talking like I'm talking about like you know uh uh, uh the Eric B Kane era you know um yeah. MC MC Light all of that and like the the thing I noticed about um hip hop during that time and what I noticed about this even before I even before this like it was it was fun. It was camaraderie. It was like, you know what I'm saying? Yep. It was just an abundance of like this this energy that you can't get nowadays. Like nothing about no. nothing about what's being done in hip hop is like what I would call fun anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um not good clean fun. Like just unadulterated. I don't have to fake it. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like me and Anthony talk about it all the time. When you listen to uh yeah. Bizarre Ride, Bizarre Ride, like you yep. can genu- you can hear it on that record that they had fun when they made that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, like, I like that competition too. The competition too amongst each other. Right. And it wasn't like the and type it was of competition. Like a healthy, it was a right. healthy level of competition. Yeah, it wasn't like what you hear nowadays, like where you hear just rappers trying to out rap each other on you would you know what I'm saying? I guess with today you would call a posse track. Like it wasn't you know what I'm saying? Just like, oh, I can rap faster than you, and I can put, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's well, like, that's the lyrics over everything part that is stupid. Is that yeah, what you're talking about? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and um, I don't know. I just think that that's that's what we need more of, and I think it's kind of hard to have in this climate of you know, oh, everybody woke, everybody conscious type of energy that we're dealing with now. You know what I'm saying? So, it's, my new word for that shit is woke sleep. Because <laughs> the ice people talking about how woke they are, like I, I don't know. I guess it. I get it. I mean, I get it. You know, four forty four is just too high minded for you. And Jay Z is talking about Picasso <laughs> now, and you know, it, buying buying artwork. You know what? I would think Fifty Cent would understand that as grown MFers because his ass is grown as crap too. <laughs> You're too old like you need to be getting up on some of his, his golf music rap then. You need to you need to figure out how to get golf level you know, golf course hip hop cornered yourself because you're too old for what these kids are doing. Yeah, that's that's another that's another issue I'm seeing in in the culture too. Like you know, and we probably talked about this before, but um, like you got a lot of these older cats that instead of being mentors, they don't want to play the position of mentor. They want to hang out with mm-hmm. these these younger artists. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times when you hear them on the record, it's more like, you know, I'm I'm hanging I'm hanging around with them. You know, but I I'm not, I don't want to play that old head at the at the uh, party type thing. We're at this odd place in hip hop now because, as you guys have said before, and I have said to the people, and we've had these conversations that the the people of my generation, normally every generation would, you know, they bow out and the new ones come in, but it's because we've always been advancing. Mm-hmm. But this is the generation we're not stepping out because there has been no advancement made. And that's what I'm saying is that if we plateaued at this point and the the genre is going in that ugly direction of demise, you know, because it's all about, it's just being pop and it's got all of it, this, it's, you know, all of its original components and elements that made it what it was sucked out of it and now you're just slapping pop sentiments onto everything of it. You're not going to have old heads bowing out for you. And I want people to understand that you're not going to have old heads bowing out for you. They're not going to do it. So then my question is to 50 and to people like, what are you doing? (laughs) 50 in the movies now. Then stop talking about Jay Z Jay Z's golf course rap and let him do what he needs to do. Let him make a grown man hip hop genre. Like the uh, yeah. a, a part of the genre called grown man hip hop. Right, basically. <laughs> so so we can have something to counteract that and then Lupe can go over there. 
and everybody who we love, like to live, everybody can go into the grown man hip hop category. I'm okay with that. And 50, I don't know where 50 gonna wind up because he don't want to be a grown man and he's too old to be a young man, so. Yeah. No longer a young man, young man. Look, he, we all, 50 got so many issues, the least of which is talking about 444. He needs to take care of his son. And his issues with his baby mom always going back and forth with each other on Twitter and social fucking media every two seconds. That's just a message. But, um, yeah, so there's that. We're having a half a day, guys. Yay. 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 <laughs> we get out early it. today. Yay. Yeah, um, you guys get a half a day. I just got to make sure um, that we discuss recess quickly. And you guys got to get your homework because I'm letting you out early. So you can't just not do homework, you know. What we, what we got for yeah. recess? Yeah, y'all got homework. Everybody has homework, so... Um, recess. And who should say we have for recess? I like I like Lord Jamar. We <laughs> all like Lord Jamar. I like Lord Jamar for recess this week. Lord you know, Jamar will, will, will um have you getting your knowledge on. On challenge. <laughs> oh, yo! Everybody take take his book challenge. Aaron, what's your favorite part of um, Lord Jamar making everybody knowledgeable? <laughs> oh man, like man, y'all know, y'all know, I'm, I, I fuck with them interviews on uh on the Vlad John. Even though we don't we don't fuck with Vlad around here, but them Lord them Lord Jamar interviews, they I don't know. It's almost like it's almost like a lot of times like we end up saying this stuff that we thinking a lot of times so it's like you know yeah. Yeah, that need to, that need to be said and it need to be put out of there you know what i'm saying like even like um i think he's starting to rub off on vlad a little bit too because i was watching the, i was watching one interview where um vlad was talking to somebody about drugs and he was like um he was like yeah we didn't really you know we didn't really condone drugs early on in hip-hop and all that type of stuff and i was sitting there just like wow but a while ago you would have been the same type of person talking about some yeah yep you know you know yep. what i'm saying so i was just like all right yeah you know like it's good that you know they had those they had those discussions and stuff i wish he would have had like because that remember that convo we were having before in vlad and lord jamar were talking about crack in the 80s yeah uh-huh. and, and like Vlad, you are too old. Like you know, we weren't doing crack. Why didn't? Because he was like, well, we didn't talk about doing, doing crack on records. I was like, not only that, but we didn't do crack. <laughs> crack is cheap. Stop spreading right. the false narrative that teenagers and twenty somethings were doing crack. Twenty somethings and teenagers were selling crack. They were not smoking it. Yeah, and they barely talked about that. Yeah. They really did. Yeah, they didn't. Not that. I Around mean, that time. When, See, when that's quote what, unquote that's... gangster rap came through, that's when it, you started yeah, hearing exactly. crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The West Coast came, and then that, you know, on the East Coast, before the West Coast started banging really hard, you didn't hear stuff about crack until Dope Man hit. Dope Man, Dope Man. <laughs> yeah, I just but like that, I just but like that was the NWA camp. That was ruthless. Yeah, I just like I just like when you know Lord Jamar put him in his place a lot of times because Vlad be getting out of pocket, man. He do be getting out of pocket. He really does. He really does. Like I, I mean, still, before that, like yeah, I, I like unpack understand. that shit. Like like NWA will be talking about not NWA, but um, PE will be talking about the opposite of that. Right. Yeah. I feel like Lord Jamar does a good job of checking Vlad a lot more than some people that come on that show. Yeah, he talk about it. He talk about a bunch of stuff that, like, a lot of times, I don't even think, like, you know, a lot of the listeners be catching the hook, though. Like, Vlad will sit up there, Vlad will sit up there and he'll talk about, you know, 
you know, record sales, money this, money that, you know, business writing all this. And um, they was having this one interview. I can't even remember which one it was. And um, and Lord Jamar was just talking about. He was like, you know, it's not even a, it's not even a money thing. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, it's just having your, having your your spirit right, having your mind right. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. and um. Like I don't even think, you know what right I'm saying? I don't even think the like he caught the hook on what he was saying or even cared. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because he was that type of person. Oh, you know that was something I really dug. Well, see, that's why it's good to have Lord Jamar do so many of those interviews because Lord Jamar is not always focused on money. Most of the time, he actually is focused on the other, you know, issues. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what the interview it was. He was talking about it. Um, it was the Malice interview because they was um, Led was asking him like, you yeah, know, what yeah, he thought yeah. about what Malice said, and he what was talking about are? how you know, um, he was saying no about malice. That. yeah, no mm-hmm. Malice. He was talking about the energy being put out with the songs that he was recording and how when he had time to sit back and think about it, it made him reevaluate things. And Lord Jamar was just like, see. That's what that's what we need to be doing more of, falling back and you know what I'm saying, um, yep. meditating, you know, just thinking about some of this stuff that we're doing. And that's I what played that one I think that's last week or the week before last, Aaron. Cause yeah, I think that's he was. Yeah, I think, he was. Yeah, I think it was the week before. Yeah, then. he was talking about how he said if more of us did that, we wouldn't put all this freaking garbage out. Right. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, we gotta remember too. Most people don't don't necessarily know if they're if they're you know if they're youngins or even if they're young old heads. You know, if they're like a little bit younger than me, like right. 35, 36, they probably don't remember Brand Nubian. The group that Lord Jamar came from was Brand Nubian, and Brand Nubian did not. You know, they would have been called a conscious group. Now they were conscious. You know, they they, they like. Shit, if they don't like Lupe's bad bitch, they don't want to hear slow down, do they? Mm. <laughs> right, how about this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, like they, so Lord Jamar is coming from a, a different place. Now, I don't always agree with Lord Jamar when he starts to get his, like, his, his misogyny bag. Or when he starts talking, you know, like coming at, like, LGBTQ people. Like, I don't agree with that stuff in general but even a lot of the stuff about women sometimes I agree like I halfway agree with them yeah yeah I don't always agree I think with- see but that's you know it's funny that you talk about like the stuff that you don't agree with him about because I feel like that's a lot of the reason that you know he turned people off too cause you know what I'm saying like uh he might be saying something that's like you know uh, beneficial but at the same time it's stuff that he's going to say that's like you know alright you want a little mm-hmm. bit too far and people that just get people get disconnected off of little stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So they do. You know what? And I'm gonna say the same thing that I've heard a zillion times from other grown people, from my mom, from my godmom, from so many adults like that. You eat the flesh, you leave the bones. Mm-hmm. Nobody's gonna say everything one hundred percent what you wanna hear. Oh yeah, exactly. You take what's beneficial and then you leave the rest and you just you know you can't always take the whole message what everybody's saying because people like to interject their own personal crap in there sometimes it's not going to serve you no right not at all. yeah not at yeah all. all right so so applause to lord jamar please please either get your own platform or make Vlad give you a corner like <laughs> lord jamar's corner <laughs> and 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 cut cut him in on those profits, Vlad. Lord yeah, Jamar is making you grip. Yeah, I think it would. Yeah, he is. I think it would be interesting if um if Lord Jamar just had like um some dialogue with other um like artists or other people like um. I do too. Besides Vlad, like uh, Lord Jamar should have guests on. Yeah, that would be dope. Yeah. I want I want Lord Jamar to grill um Nas's baby mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Carmen. Oh yeah. <laughs> he not gonna get all Joe Button Virgo on us, is he? Oh no, not with nope. I hope he. I hope he. Uh, uh, I don't think 
say, I think it's going to go the complete opposite way. So we always talk about on the show how Joe Button, like, off the air, how Joe Button likes to get all googly eye when he see, especially, like, young girls come on, like, younger women come on. He gets all, he starts evaporating, <laughs> like steam. Yeah, he, he switch, up his, <laughs> switch up his whole position and shit. <laughs> Well, yeah, like when Vince Staples comes on. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't get it with that cat. Anyway, <laughs> but Lord Jamar is not going to do, I'm sorry. Lord Jamar ain't changing his style up because he sees his pretty face. I think he might even grind it in harder. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah. Uh, might just so be a I, saw, so I think I suspect too, so. you a little more than normal. I will, I will watch. He's a Virgo though. He's a Virgo too. Remember when his birthday came? Mm, yeah. He's a Virgo. He just not. He's just not that kind of Virgo. <laughs> 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 I can see him being more like Nah. Like. Mm. You know, so um, next week home next week's homework is about trip hop. Because Aaron and I really like trip hop. Do you, I don't know if you even like trip hop, Aunt. Do you? I've uh, I've dabbled here and there. I guess I gotta catch up. Yeah. Well, you know Aaron and I funny? have have discovered some things about trip hop. Um, that we would like to convey to our our listening audience. Yeah, I, well, I'll get into it next episode. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Uh, okay, now. And so, you know, so we'll unpack that. We're not going to trigger it or say it on y'all now. We're not going to jump on it like, yeah, this is hot. But, I mean, the show is, is titled, you know, aptly about trip hop because the trip hop aesthetic is definitely being sort of borrowed right now. And kind of rehashed. Yeah. I mean, in all the wrong ways. Other part, in all the wrong ways possible. I mean, real trip hop is amazing. It's just you know, it's like ambient. So, so just look up what trip hop is, and we'll define it next week. You know, when we come to the show, we'll start talking about its origins and where it came from, and and why we're even having this discussion. Outside of the fact that trip hop is just cool. I know, but it's definitely something else there to it. So we'll unpack that next week. Half a day commence. Um, <laughs> uh, school is officially out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You bring your phone everywhere. Work, school, the movies. Now you can bring it to an Xfinity store for an easy way to switch to Xfinity Mobile, a new kind of network designed to save you money. You can get up to five lines of talk and text included with Xfinity Internet at no extra cost, so all you pay for is data. It's never been easier to switch to Xfinity Mobile and keep the phone you love. Click here to see how. Sorry, I gotta take this. Restrictions apply. Limited to select mobile phones. Requires activation of a new line of Xfinity Mobile. Up to five devices per account. New Xfinity Internet customers.